For centuries there had been a number of territorial disputes between Persia and their western neighbour, whether it was the Ottomans or Iraq. In the 20th century one disputed region was Khuzestan. It was controlled by the Iranians, however it was mainly inhabited by Arabs. Another was the Shat Al Arab Waterway, where the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers meet. It had historically been shared by the two nations, however Iraq had intentions to expand to the East Bank. Fast forward to 1979 and the Islamic Revolution of Iran shook the region. The Ayatollah Khomeini took power and called for Shias in Iraq to rise up against the secular Ba'athist party headed by Saddam Hussein. Meanwhile, Saddam Hussein wished to make Iraq the dominant power in the region. He hoped to take advantage of the volatile situation in Iran to invade, and he also supported Arabs in Khuzestan to revolt against the Iranian. These Arabs in Khuzestan achieved worldwide attention when they attacked the Iranian embassy in London. Finally, a cause for war presented itself in March 1980. There was an attempted assassination on Iraqi's deputy prime minister in southern Iraq. Saddam Hussein blamed the Iranians and invaded in September 1980. There was little international outcry. The new Islamic Iranian government made a lot of enemies. They often criticised the US and the ongoing hostage crisis in Tehran worsened relations. And they angered the USSR by banning the communist parties in Iran and the Soviets were already allied with Iraq. Therefore, Iraq would receive a great deal of financial aid and supply of arms from numerous countries, while Iran received comparatively less. Foreign support during this conflict would become much more complicated, i.e. the Iran-Contra affair, and many nations supplied to both countries. However, this is how it generally remained throughout. During the initial invasion, the Iranian army still lacked organisation since the revolution and it was caught off guard. Iraq was then free to capture their border cities. However, Iraq also suffered from poor planning and organisation and could not capitalise on their victories. This gave the Iranians time to organise their armies. Their air force gained air superiority and then, contrary to what Saddam expected, Hundreds of thousands volunteered to fight for the new revolutionary government. By 1982, they had regrouped and launched a successful counterattack. The Iranian victories, particularly their recapture of Qom Tsar, shook the Iraqis and they retreated behind their pre-war borders. Saddam offered war reparations as peace to stop the advancing Iranians. However, they refused and wanted to drive into Iraq and install a Shia government there. The Iranians assaulted Basra in the summer of 82, hoping to cut off Iraq's access to the sea. However, the Iraqis, with the help of chemical weapons, were able to fend them off. Iran then spread its forces along the border and attempted to invade the whole country in one fell swoop. However, their human wave attacks could not fight through Iraq's entrenched positions. These assaults would continue unsuccessfully for the rest of the war. Iraq then changed its tactics. They started to bomb Iranian cities, notably Tehran, with the hope of crushing their morale. However, it often had the opposite effect. So the Iranians aligned themselves with the Kurds in Iraq who rebelled against Saddam. However, after years of guerrilla warfare, the Iraqis dropped chemical and biological weapons on their villages and the uprising subsequently finished. In 1984, in this new war of attrition, Iraq started bombing Iran's oil tankers in the hope of crippling their economy. Iran responded by using their superior navy to close the Straits of Hormuz to Kuwaiti ships who were supplying the Iraqis. However, after a couple years, this blockade brought the superpowers into the war. In 1987, desperate to maintain the supply of oil from the region, several nations sent fleets to protect the oil tankers. It then became very apparent that the world was not going to allow the Iranians to win the war. Nevertheless, the Iranians continued to refuse the UN's peace proposals. That is until 1988. The Iraqis were able to acquire a large amount of military equipment and launched a counterattack of their own. They hoped to quickly take Khuzestan, but once again, like every assault of this war, it ended in failure. Both sides, tired of war and under international pressure, accepted the UN's calls for a ceasefire and returned to the pre-war borders. Hundreds of thousands of people died in what proved to be a very long and very costly stalemate but both sides claimed victories. However, they were both left with a great deal of debt, and Iraq's poor economy was one of the causes of leading Saddam to invade Kuwait a couple years later.